So we're coming to a world where a man acting as a sole provider for his family is, is becoming less and less the norm, right? Especially as the millennial generation starts to come into the adult age and they're graduating college and kind of moving on with their lives. You're seeing more and more women in the workforce. However, that conventional family construct still exists and it's there. And we may not be the loudest, but we're definitely still the majority. So what does that mean? We are men who work for a fucking living. We are men who make sure that the needs of our children, our wives, our girlfriends, our significant others are provided for first. We are the ones that sacrifice time away from the home and away from the children so that we can ensure that we have food on the table and shelter over our, our families. And we are the men who put ourselves last. That's who we are. That's what we represent. And oftentimes that's, that's the position that we find ourselves in is the least appreciated. So what I wanted to take some time was to talk about is investment in yourself and the mentality that you bring to the table. This is who we are and this is what we represent. And eventually we're going to become the minority when it comes to that prototype and that family construct because of the generation that's moving up where the woman is stepping into those roles. But the reality is, is if you think about it, we also have the ability to raise our children with that mentality. And that protective instinct that a man has over his wife and his family will never go away. I'm of the opinion that society kind of goes in ebbs and flows. And we're in a place where the millennial generation, this very progressive mentality of what the inside of the home looks like is almost the peak of the opposite end of that flow. So as those millennial children start growing into age, we're going to start to see a transition back to that conventional American dream type construct. But the only way that starts is by us continuing to teach our children especially our sons, this is what your expectation is and leading by example. But if you guys remember, one of the key things that I said during that spiel is we're the last to invest in ourselves. We put ourselves last when it comes to needs. There's an ongoing argument that talks about should the woman feed the husband first or the children first? And I can tell you right now that 99.9999999999% of men out there will say, feed the kids first because that's why I'm fucking doing this. And the only reason the woman would feed the man first is as a sign of respect that he was the one who gave it. But that's only if there's enough food for everybody. The man will always put himself last. But there's a little bit of problem with us doing it that way. A lot of my clients, a lot of the people I work with, they're mostly older than me, and I'm 32 years old. They're the type of men who are in their late 30s, in their 40s, even 50s, who have literally spent their entire lives doing nothing but acting as a sole provider for their home and playing that role and being that man. And now they're coming back around and they're like, man, I need to make a change. Like, look at myself. I don't feel good. I'm out of shape. My health is at risk. It's time for me to make an investment in myself. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Your investment in what you're willing to put into yourself for your own well-being isn't just the physical aspect of it. And one of the things that I really try to do with this podcast is talk about the things that nobody talks about. And they're real. And the reason I know they're real is because they're things that I deal with personally. And what I'll tell you is, as a man who's been through a divorce... As a man who's kind of been through it all when it comes to the emotional roller coaster that a man could go through as a provider, one of the things that I learned going through all that is that part of the reason why my marriage and long-term relationships that I was in failed was because I wasn't investing into myself and I wasn't happy with where I was, not just physically, because I've always been pretty confident in my physique and how I showed up in the world in that regard. But where I wasn't investing was my mental health. Where I wasn't investing was my spiritual growth. And that's one of the things that I want to take the time to encourage you guys to really think about tonight is, well, what does that mean? Well, let's talk about mental health for a second. 
we as men, society has trained us and brought us to a place where it's not necessarily okay for us to be comfortable or confident talking about the way that we feel. And most men are kind of these stoic, yeah, whatever. Like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, do what you want. Whatever makes you happy. It's all about everybody else. But in the back of your mind, what ends up happening is you build up this passive resentment for the things that are going on around you because you're not dealing with these emotions that you have. You're not communicating effectively and you're not talking about it. And I think it's really, really important to get that stuff out into the open and find some type of outlet to deal with those things. If it's a friend, if it's a family member, if it's my Facebook group, if it's me, fuck, I don't care. If you're struggling and you've got some mental shit that's going on, don't carry that burden with you. It's important that you take care of yourself mentally. And like before I can kind of continue into the spiritual aspect of it is I want to tell you that these three things, your mental, your spiritual and your physical health are all interconnected. I could feel great physically, but not be there mentally. And my entire well-being is going to significantly decrease and decline. So what I'm telling you is, is if you're dealing with mental stuff, it doesn't have to be a disorder or a disease or something that you're dealing with. Maybe you're just not feeling good. You're not happy. You're not fulfilled in the relationship that you're in. What I'll tell you is that those things shouldn't go unheard. You have a voice. You need to voice it and communicate. And continuing on that subject, the key difference between men and women is we don't necessarily project our feelings verbally. The way that we project our feelings is in our body language and how much we're willing to invest in certain circumstances. We're kind of a pick your battle type, right? Like whatever, man, like fuck it. That's kind of the attitude. If it doesn't feel like it's worth it to you because you've got so much shit going on and you've got so much on your plate that you're just kind of going to de-invest in that and take yourself away from it because it's not something you want to focus or deal with. Where women, most women are going to communicate their issues in a mental regard externally, whether it be verbally or through their attitude and the way that they act and respond. A lot of times what you'll see is that women are going to project their emotions and it's really fucking hard to miss them. So a lot of times what happens, especially in relationships, and we're kind of getting onto that sidetrack a little bit, is when a man is not feeling emotionally fulfilled or mentally fulfilled in that type of relationship, he's going to begin to de-invest. Where with a woman, she's not feeling fulfilled or she has issues, she's going to begin to project. And that's kind of where the whole my wife keeps nagging me thing comes from is because we typically deal with these things in opposite ways. So it's of paramount importance that we as men have the maturity to recognize that and be willing to set our ego aside, be willing to identify that we're doing that subconsciously and be willing to take the first step in resolving those mental issues or those conflicts that are happening in our lives. And a lot of times what that means is being willing to talk about how you feel and your perspective. So the other thing I want to talk about is your spiritual growth and your spiritual development. A lot of times what happens when somebody mentions spirituality, the very first thing that comes to mind is religion. Now, what I'll tell you is that while religion is definitely a part of spirituality, they're not one and the same. So spirituality is a lot more than just religion. Spirituality is a balance between your physical, your mental, and your social well-being. And the way that I really try to define spirituality from my perspective is, what is it that gives you peace? At the end of your day or at the end of your week, are you at peace? Are you content and happy with where you are in your life and those aspects? And the biggest part of spirituality that I really want to hit the head on is some people are stress monsters, some people aren't, some people worry, some people don't, some people are planners, some people aren't. Me personally, I'm the type of guy where I worry about things and I stress out about things, but I don't necessarily sit and ponder on them and like try to make a strategic plan. 
I just act, fire from the hip, if you will. Like, hey, this is what I'm gonna do to fix this. Here we go, boom. And then I remove that from my mind and move on. And that's not how I've always been. I've been more of a worry wart, for lack of a better term. But what I want you guys to start thinking about when it comes to spirituality is you've got things in your life that you can control and that you can impact. And you've got things in your life that you cannot control or impact or change. And a lot of times we stress most about the things that we can't control. And the reason we stress most about those things is because we can't control them and it impacts us and our lives and things that are going on. When you learn to remove the stress and the worry and the negativity from your life as it pertains to the things that you cannot control and focus and prioritize on the things that you can, your well-being is going to greatly improve. Your mental health is going to greatly improve. Your social life is going to greatly improve. Your physical appearance and your well-being in that regard is going to improve because you're going to feel better. There's a saying we have in the military, it's look good, feel good. And it works conversely too. When you feel good, you typically look good. Why? Because you show up in the world differently when you feel good and you're at peace and you're okay with where your life's at. Yeah, everybody's got their problems. Okay, everybody's got their baggage. Okay, but guess what? This person is just fucking living their life content acting as necessary and making changes to the things that they can change and the things that they can't okay and i'm gonna tell you right now the reason i brought this up under the subject matter of investment is because this isn't something that i can just do overnight you have to invest the time and be willing to emotionally and mentally think about these concepts of spirituality and being at peace and letting go of all of this negativity and these things that are stressing and worrying you and just really become the term that I like to use is emotionally intelligent. As men, we have two emotions that we display to the world, anger and happiness, and then indifference. So typically any negative emotion on the spectrum of anger to sadness to grief is most times going to be expressed externally as anger. And then anything that's positive, no matter what it is, will be expressed happy. But we as men, we know that that's not necessarily the case. That's just how we express those emotions. So what it's time to do is recognize and have the emotional intelligence to really understand what's going on with you mentally and emotionally so that you can go back to your mental health, your emotional health, and address those issues in a way that helps you positively impact your spirituality and your peace and your well-being. Now, obviously, this is a podcast that caters to fitness, so we're going to talk about physical growth. Now, the very first thing I wanted to talk about physical growth is physical growth doesn't necessarily mean going to the gym and getting fucking jacked and juicy every day. Physical growth is about a lot more than just lifting weights. And I think most of you guys probably know that. But the two things I'd really like to talk about in that regard is your physical growth is more or less your fitness and your nutrition. So first thing is your fitness. Your physical growth doesn't necessarily have to rely upon whether or not you're on Josh Holyfield's 12-week shredding season program and you're hitting the gym six days a week. Your physical fitness could be yoga, running, skipping, fucking jump roping, playing with your kids outside, get outside, move, be physical, do not be sedentary. Because what happens when you're sedentary, you're not doing anything. I can tell you what happens. People start to get depressed. People start to get angry. People start to get down on themselves. And they start having this slew of uncontrollable negative emotions. And it stems from their physical growth. So any one of these three things that I'm talking about tonight could detrimentally and greatly degrade the quality of the other two. When you start working on your body and you start making sure that you're healthy and you're active... It's going to positively impact your mental and your spiritual well-being as well. So really take the time to focus. If you're not on one of my routines, great. If you're here because you want the information and that's part of what you're doing is you just need somebody to listen to, kind of go over these things, awesome. But either way, I encourage you to get out there, move. The other aspect 
of your physical health and well-being is your nutrition. So bottom line is with nutrition, garbage in, garbage out. If I'm putting shit into my body that I know isn't good for it, then I'm going to feel like shit. A lot of times people that go to the gym all the time and we work out hard are the ones that are most heavily addicted to caffeine. The ones that are not eating right, eating fast food and going out. Heavy alcohol drinkers. In no way am I telling you to throw on your Joseph Smith Mormon hat and focus on your nutrition. But at the same time, you can have too much of anything. So be conservative about what you're putting in your body. Be cognizant about what you're putting in your body as far as what you eat and what you consume whether it be drugs or food, and take care of yourself. As men, these are the things that we can really start and focus on as we start to invest in ourselves to reach a place where we feel happy and fulfilled with where we are in our lives. And what I can say is that a lot of times we're the ones who disregard our own well-being because we're so focused on providing for our families and acting as a foundation and a backbone.